YouTube, it's your boy Tech It Up back at it again with another video. And I actually just did something super exciting to my Tesla Model Y performance. And it's something that I think should have came with all Model Ys and Model 3s, especially if you paid for the more premium trim, such as the performance variant. And especially for those of us that bought our vehicles before the price drops. Uh, I think I paid a little over 70K for my car, including taxes. What I did is essentially changed out the headliner. But before I go into all the details, let me show you all what it looks like up close. We're in the back. You see that we have the dome light right there. Um, and you see I also painted this middle piece right here black as well. I wasn't able to paint this the piece inside. That's gray. It's bolted to the vehicle. You can barely notice it. Uh, but I, I wasn't about to undo the seatbelt and unbolt that and do any of that. You actually really can't tell. So no reason to change that. It's almost like a little mini Model X. Uh, you got the screen back here. This is the screen that I reviewed on my channel a couple months ago from Hand Show. Super nice. After using this for a couple months and having passengers in the back, really surprised with this small vent still does a good job keeping the car cool especially since i'm in texas like you see it looks really good you can see the speaker grills are black now the sun visors let me talk to you about those i actually replaced i didn't wrap the sun visors it's possible but <laughs> it does take a lot of skill and that's not something that i wasn't gonna even try um, but this is actually from a Model S refreshed version. So after 2021, I believe it's from a 2022 Plaid, but I was actually able to buy both of them for $200 total. And then I was able to sell my original sun visors from this vehicle, the gray ones for 120. So I paid about an $80 difference, not too bad. So if we go over here, you can see, um, Sun visor right there, and then the speaker grill is black as well. And then if I go to the front, close this so we can minimize wind. You can see it is really nice. Super easy to clean too. Keep in mind, Whatever material you buy from your local fabric store, it is definitely gonna look a lot darker in the vehicle. Um, so something you wanna be aware of. This material is super easy to clean. All you need is water and like a little tiny um, suede brush that I can link in the description box. But overall, this is very nice. And when I add the new steering wheel with the carbon fiber dash trim here, I think it's gonna look really good car is going to have that dark look inside. I love this. And then final piece, the dome light painted black as well. As you see, I had to paint over the hazard symbol. You can see the imprint, but it's no longer red. I think that looks great. This works great as well. Plastic still on here. You can see it has the Alcantara covered um, visor trim as well. This came with this, so didn't have to buy that. Definitely recommend going for this. I personally like the two-tone look. You could just get the darker fabric that they have at your local fabric store. Joanne actually had it and it actually matches this. I put it next to it, um, but I personally like the dual tone. I think it looks good. The fit and finish is really nice sealed everywhere in the hairliner. I was afraid things would look misaligned and it does not. So that made me super happy. Here's the back again, super nice finish. So in general, I think it looks great. 
There's still some things that I wanna fix that shouldn't take too long. In total, I spent about 200 bucks on this project, which is a lot cheaper than the complete headliner replacement from Unplugged Performance. There is an alternative if you don't wanna go the route that I'm about to show you, but you do not need to pay $2,000 plus for the Unplugged Performance replacement. That is a complete ripoff. But first and foremost, you need the fabric. Um, you can go to your local fabric store. I have a Joann's right around the corner from me, so I went there and I got this Alcantara suede-like material. I think it was 10 bucks, 12 bucks a yard. Um, in total, I got five yards with about 68 bucks, and it's great. They do recommend for headliners that you get one with the foam backing versus no foam backing like I got. You save money if you go that route. But really the reason why you wanna get a foam backing is so that your glue doesn't seep through the material. But the work around that is just giving the glue 30 seconds to harden a little bit instead of being in the liquid form. Cause if you spray the glue on there, spray the glue on a headliner, and then you just smack it on there, it is gonna seep through. Just give it 30 seconds to dry up a little bit. And the material is very forgiving. I, there were so many times where I got to remove it, put it back on, remove it, put it back on. Um, and once I messed up so many times and I would just cut a new, a new piece, but it was very forgiving, especially for someone who's never wrapped a headliner before. But I would say that I, I really like that it was forgiving because if it wasn't, I would have failed. So you have to get your fabric. Doesn't matter which one you get. I got this darker gray color. They have a black one as well which will be a little bit more similar to what you see in the Model S. I just like this one a little bit better. Next, you're gonna need a pry tool. I have a link in the description for some that I recommend if you don't have one already. This is gonna be to remove the headliner pieces, um, but also to tuck everything back in when you're putting everything back together. You also need a special drill bit. I got a whole set. The link is gonna be in the description box. You're really gonna only need to use your T30 and your T20 in a T8 um, for some pieces as well, but the, you might as well get the full set if you don't have it already. That will be in the description box as well. Then you need an N95 mask. You don't, you don't technically need it, but I recommend it, um, especially when you're spraying the glue and you're spraying the paint. Uh, this just makes it so that you can ensure that you're not inhaling all of those fumes. I actually did <laughs> do it without this at first and it just didn't make me feel the most comfortable. So I, I got this N95 mask which made it so much better. So I recommend that as well. Now this is more of a nice to have, you don't need this, but having these mini spring clamps, which I picked up at Walmart for like five bucks, I'll have a link in the description box if you wanna check out the same or a similar thing on Amazon. This is so that when you're laying the headliner down and you're waiting for it to dry, you can clamp it down just so you can ensure that everything is staying in place, especially if you're configuring other sections of the pillar or the headliner. These clamps help. You don't need them, but it is nice to have. I didn't use them for every piece, but then when I did start using them, I liked them. Work smarter, not harder. Next, you need the 3M Super 77 glue. <laughs> You're really not supposed to use this. If you do take on this project, I recommend using 3M's headliner glue. But personally for me, this worked perfect, but any experts out there, they're gonna tell you, no, you need to use the headliner glue so that if you're somewhere where it gets a lot hotter than normal, especially me, since I'm in Texas, you don't have to worry about the headliner dropping. I haven't ran into those issues, um, but if I were to go through that, I would consider getting the headliner glue from 3M. Uh, but the 3M Super 77 worked perfect for me. I do not recommend using the 3M Super 90. I tried that, it gave me a weird texture and I had to start over. So if you go with this, use the Super 77, it works perfect for me. You're also going to need an X-Acto an exacto knife. Um, this is gonna be useful for when the headliner is in place and you're, it's glued down, you're gonna have to go behind it and trim some pieces, especially so that the clips can match up. So this was useful just for um, getting behind that and cutting pieces and making those more fine cuts that you need to make. Then you also need some scissors so that you can cut the fabric to fit the pillar. Really, it's, it can be a rough cut because after you lay it down, you can just go in with the exacto knife or the scissors and cut off the remaining pieces after it's laid down. We're almost done, I promise. This seems like a lot of products, but they're all super cheap. 
Uh, here you need this tool. So this is a tool that you can get on Amazon. This is a way when you need to take off the side pillars in the vehicle. This is gonna be useful so you can release the seatbelt without having to go underneath the seat and unbolt the seatbelt. That's too much work. Just get this, you put it under the seat buckle, it clicks off, and then when you're done, you just click it back on there. I'll show you all. This was $24 on Amazon. Makes your life so much easier. And honestly, you can return it after you use it if you want to, but I always recommend having this if you're taking on projects like this. We're almost done. Then you need a hot glue gun. Well, this is more of a nice to have. Once everything is laid down on a headliner or the pillars, when you have those edges that you didn't get too much glue on and they're not sticking down, this is very useful in putting some hot glue down, sticking the edges down, giving it a few seconds to dry. This made things super easy. I do recommend getting a hot glue gun. If you do really good with your gluing, you won't need it, but there were times where the edges didn't get enough glue and they weren't sticking as much as I would like. I chose to go with these paints. This was a semi-gloss black, and then I have a satin clear coat. So this is for those trim pieces in your vehicle, because once you switch the headliner out, you're gonna have your gray dome lights and all the other gray pieces. So what I did is I did spray the semi-gloss black on it, on it, did two light coats and then one hard coat, gave it some time to dry, and then I went over it with the clear coat just to make sure it's protected, but also bring down some of that gloss because I didn't want too much gloss on the black. This was a really good brand to use, and yeah, you can choose whatever color you want. I do recommend black or dark gray. So now that we covered what all you need, what you gotta do now is remove the four pillars and the headliner, which breaks up into two pieces. This is actually the easiest part of the process. I watched this video on YouTube, um, followed it step by step, and I was able to remove the headliner if I were to total the time. It took me about 45 minutes to an hour. You can honestly do it in 30 to 45 minutes. I actually broke it up into parts. I didn't take everything all out at once. I removed the two front pillars, wrap those, remove the two middle pillars, wrap those, then remove the headliner and wrap both of those pieces and parts. It's nice that it breaks up into two, makes things a lot easier, uh, but that's what you're gonna wanna do is remove the headliner first and that is the easiest part. Next, what you're gonna wanna do is actually wrap the headliners with the fabric. Like I was saying earlier, it's very forgiving, so you're gonna mess up and that is completely okay. If you do start up with five yards, you can only mess up so many times, so you do wanna be careful, don't give up. If you mess up, just try again with the same piece that you cut, but with five yards, you can mess up and throw pieces away, uh, but hey, the fabric is super cheap. If you do end up using up all of the five yards, you can go to Joann's or your local fabric store and get more. Some people started off with 10 yards, um, and that's what they recommended. But if you can get away with five, save some money, I definitely recommend starting with five and then playing it by ear. Um, if you notice that you're already down to one yard and you haven't wrapped the headliner yet, then you know, hey, may need to go to Joann's and get two to three more yards so that I can have enough fabric to wrap the headliner. To be honest with all of you, the two front pillars were fairly easy. The middle pillars, those were hard. It was just hard to get the deep curves on um, at the top as it like curves down to the driving side of the vehicle. And that was the hardest part. I did watch a lot of videos on how to wrap pillars with deep curves. Um, this one right here helped me out a lot. But when it came to the headliner, it was super easy. Everything just went on, um, which I was really surprised. And the clamps helped a lot when it came to the actual top headliner in the vehicle. Uh, then the next part after that was actually painting the pieces. And once I gave that a day to dry, I was then able to put the headliner back into the vehicle and everything looked really good. You just wanna take your time. It does take patience um, just because it is not something that you wanna rush because <laughs> if you rush it, it is something that you have to look at every single time you drive your car. So you wanna take your time. But overall, I spent about a week doing this, I spent 200 bucks. And the reason I spent the week is because I didn't dedicate a full day to this project. I just dedicated an hour here and there on wrapping different pillars. I actually wrapped the two pillars one day, two pillars the next day, and then one half of the headliner the next day, and then finished off the headliner the day after that. And then the last day of the project, I painted the pieces, let them dry, 
And then next thing you know, I was able to put everything back together and put it back in a vehicle. So that's why it took me a week. Uh, but overall, if I had to do this project again, I would probably do it a little bit different. Um, while it was fun to go through this experience, I think there's a better way to go about it. Um, so instead of exploring the unplugged performance headliner, something you could do is remove the headliner and then take it to your local shop, upholstery shop, and what they can do is actually wrap the pieces for you. So if I were to do that, if I were to do this again, I would probably go that route. I did get some quotes from my local shops just so that I could tell you all in this video. And they told me $600 to $700 um, if the pieces are removed and um, you give them the fabric and they put it on there, which is a little expensive. So I'm glad that I went this route and paid 200 bucks, but that still is a lot cheaper than an unplugged performance replacement. And they also don't even paint the pieces for you anymore, so the trim pieces. Uh, so if you want, if you want them to not be that great color and be black, you would still have to do that yourself. So I would either go the route of DIY, where you remove the pillars and the headliner, you wrap it, put it back in, or I would go the other route, which is where you remove the four pillars, the headliner, and then you take it to the shop to get wrapped for you for 600 to 700 bucks. And I say that is a way better alternative than going to unplug performance route. But overall, I think this turned out great. Let me know what you all think down in the comments. But other than that, I will see you all on the next video and make sure you keep teching it up. Peace.